<laughs> I got to my mouth. So when you think of Rooster Teeth people getting into fights, the last person you think of is Gavin, right? Well, Gavin was actually once in a fist fight. Crazy, right? Gavin free, in a fist fight. But it wasn't as epic as you might think. Because one time, there was a group of dudes, and one guy shoved another, he shoved back, then others jumped in, and it turned into this massive scuffle of like 20 dudes who were all fighting each other. And right there next to it all was none other than little Gavin, desperately trying to get out, ducking and dodging the fists that were flying all over the place. But then, Gavin saw that one of the guys was beating up his friend, so he was like, uh-oh, I gotta save him. So he ran up behind the dude that was beating up his friend, closed his eyes, and went, yeah, and punched the guy in the back of the head. And immediately, Gavin was like, oh, this is too intense for me, I gotta leg it, and ran out. And the reason why Gavin closed his eyes before punching is because he thought it would hurt less with his eyes closed. So that's the story of Gavin's fist fight. So one of Gavin's things is that he doesn't drive, right? Well, he actually did learn, but you know, because it's Gavin. There's a pretty insane story about this. Because the first time Gavin drove a car, he was driving with an instructor and he immediately drove into a pigeon. Like literally, it was like, poof. he killed the pigeon and messed up the front of the car completely blew out the headlight, fluid leaking out and all that, and the driving instructor had to get out and dig the pigeon out of the car. So the first time Gavin drove, he immediately killed a bird. So when people think of Gavin's first viral video, they typically think of the jumping on the giant balloon video, right? But there was another viral video that Gavin made, before Slow Mo Guys even, that also involved a balloon, if you can believe it. In fact, in the Slow Mo Guys YouTube channel, out of the 12 most popular videos, five of them are balloon related. But the way Gavin got introduced into slow motion cameras is because a friend of his had worked with a guy that shot slow-mo footage. And he knew that Gavin was a huge camera nerd, so he introduced them to each other. And following this, Gavin just started recording random stuff in slow motion. And one of them was a clip of a balloon popping in slow motion. And since this was before YouTube existed, he just uploaded it onto the Red Bits of Blue site. But then other people saw it and started spreading it across the internet. And soon, it was everywhere. Because at the time, slow-mo footage was still rare on the internet. So everyone was just in awe of seeing this. So it quickly spread around the world, even getting to the United States. So one day when Gavin was visiting Texas, he and the Rooster Teeth crew went into a coffee shop and he saw a bunch of people crowded watching something. And when he checked it out, he saw that it was his video. This woman was watching it on her laptop and she was showing it to a group of people being like, whoa, look at this. Then Gavin said, that's me. That's, that's me. That video you're watching, I made that and the girl flipped out. And here, Gavin realized that people were interested in seeing slow-mo footage of everyday objects like balloons and mugs, which became a huge influence on Gavin when he started the slow-mo guys. So Gavin's been a Rooster Teeth fan for an incredibly long time, as in since the first years of the company. And nowadays, the Rooster Teeth subscription is called First, but at the time, it used to be called Sponsorships. And back then, you could be a super sponsor for around 20 bucks and get even more extra perks on their website. So Gavin, being a broke kid, wanted to be a super sponsor, but didn't have the money for it. So he came up with a genius idea to get it without having to pay. On their forums, he typed, uh, can I have a sponsorship? My, uh, my entire family is dead. Oh, and, uh, it's my birthday, so I could really use the extra help. Because, you know, my whole family being dead and all that. Very convincing. Didn't work, though. Being honest, I'd probably give him a free month just because it's really funny. Think about rugby with all its running and tackling. Now imagine Gavin Free playing it. Well, you don't have to imagine it, because it's already happened. Gavin played rugby a lot in school, if you can believe it, mostly against his will. Because he was just so skinny, he was made to play the sport because the other students loved tackling him. Since for others, when they got tackled, they just fall into the ground. But when Gavin got hit, he'd go flying. So people singled him out intentionally because of this. And he'd go around the rest of his classes completely covered in mud. So you know how Gavin worked on a ton of big movies in the UK? Well, this was a cool experience for him, but it also really pissed him off. Since at the time, so few people in the UK could operate digital high-speed cameras. Whenever a movie was being shot in the UK that needed slow-mo, Gavin was one of the few people who could do it. And because of this, he was getting jobs in the film industry all the time. And specifically, he would get jobs as a main camera operator, which is very important. Because typically, as a camera operator, you'd start off with really small jobs like support roles. Then slowly and slowly over years, you'd build your way up and maybe you'd get to work on your own camera. 
Then here comes Gavin, this 17 or 18 year old kid who all of a sudden bypasses all of that and gets his own camera operating role. And because of this, a lot of people on set hated him and didn't want to listen to what he said. So he'd be like, oh, you know, knob and bob, we gotta bung the camera on this way, spaffy waff. And the other crew members would be like, yeah, whatever, kid. So none of them listened to his instructions, even though he knew how to do slow motion better than anyone on set. And inevitably, since they didn't listen to Gavin, they'd end up with crappy footage and be like, oh, what happened? Then Gavin would come in and say, right, you see? This is what I was talking about. Now if you're done screwing around, this is how you actually do it. So he'd have to constantly prove everyone wrong just to get them to listen to him, which really pissed him off. But given how successful Gavin's become as a camera operator and cinematographer, I think he can give all those people a big fat I told you so. So most of us know about the Gavin Skype commercial, but for those of you who don't, in like the mid 2000s ish, Gavin appeared in a Skype commercial with his grandfather. And the entire ad was to show that these two, even though they were separated by distance, could still connect using Skype. It's actually a really nice and wholesome watch. But this was long before Gavin was famous. He was still just some random kid from a very small town, so how did he get this? Well, Gavin always used Skype to speak to his granddad, who was an Italian chef living in London, because the two were always very close. And Gavin was super active on the Skype forums and messaging boards, which who the hell does that anymore? So Skype spotted him that way, really liked the connection he had with his granddad, and decided they'd make an ad about him. Gavin, you still lying? Hello, Gavin. Hi. Did you know that Gavin worked with a member of a famous English band? The Falls are an English rock band from Oxford, which is where Gavin's from. And they're like an actual famous band. Their music videos have like millions of views and stuff. And the member that Gavin worked with was the drummer, Jack Bevan. During his grocery store job at his hometown of Tame, Gavin worked in fruit and veg, while Bevan worked in fresh foods, which was like the ready-to-go meals and stuff. And according to Gavin, he was alright. So this guy right here, who became a famous drummer, was stacking groceries in a tiny little town with Gavin Free, who also became famous. So you know this really famous picture of Gavin? The one with the posters of the girls? What's the story behind this? Well, it's actually pretty wholesome, because growing up, Gavin's parents noticed that he never brought girls home, only guys. So Gavin would be like, Hey mom, I'm just gonna go up to my room with a bunch of dudes. No need to bother us. He was just playing video games, but his parents started to wonder. So they told him, Gavin, we just wanted you to know that we're okay with you being gay. Aw, that's really sweet of them. But Gavin was like, Okay, good to know. Not gay though. So he put up a bunch of posters of girls in bikinis making out to show that he liked girls. Because Gavin said, quote, Nothing says I'm not gay like lesbians. Which is a really funny story, but it's also really wholesome how open-minded and supportive Gavin's parents were. So Gavin's a very important member of Rooster Teeth, right? But did you know that there was a time when Bernie was hesitant about hiring Gavin? Not because he didn't want him at Rooster Teeth, because he absolutely did, but because he thought Gavin didn't want it. Because at the time, Gavin was working in the film industry, getting really good jobs working on movies. But despite this, Gavin's dream job was still to work at Rooster Teeth. But since he was from the UK, to get officially hired at Rooster Teeth, he needed to get a visa, which was essentially convincing the United States government to let him work in the country, which Bernie was helping him with. So Bernie was going around telling everyone at Rooster Teeth, hey, you know Gavin, I really want to get him here and hire him. But everyone said, nah, you don't want to do that. And Bernie was like, huh? What are you talking about? Because even though they all liked Gavin, when he said his dream job was to work at Rooster Teeth, they thought he was lying because he already had a successful film career. So the Rooster Teeth crew was like, Bernie, he doesn't want to work here. He's already really successful. He's working on movies, man. Why would he want to work here? He's just saying that to be nice. But even though Gavin was already successful, he genuinely wanted to leave that and work at Rooster Teeth. But they thought he was just saying that to not hurt their feelings. So Bernie would ask Gavin, hey, so this whole working at Rooster Teeth thing, are you sure you want to do it? And Gavin was like, uh, yeah, of course. I've wanted to work with you guys since I was a teenager. And Bernie said, But are you actually sure? Like, do you actually know that you're sure? Or are you just saying that you're sure, but you don't actually know if you are, and you don't actually know if you want this? And Gavin was like, Right. What the hell is going on? Yes, I want to work at Rooster Teeth. If I had the visa, I'd move tomorrow. I'd drop everything to work for you guys. So Bernie would show the Rooster Teeth crew all the messages from Gavin and say, See? Look at these messages, he clearly wants to work here. But they'd be like, 
Ah, you see, he says he wants to work here, but that's not actually true. You see the part where he says he wants the job? That means he doesn't actually want it. And it got to the point where even Bernie started to feel worried, thinking that he was pressuring this kid into abandoning his successful film career. And the entire time, Gavin was going, Oh. My. God. Why doesn't anyone believe me? And Gavin even said that it became harder to convince the people at Rooster Teeth that he wanted the job than it was to convince the US government to let him in the country. But it all turned out alright, because with Bernie's help, Gavin eventually did move to the US and got the job. Bernie always said that he was a big believer in everything Gavin did, and even said that the Rooster Teeth site would be known as the place where a young Gavin Free posted his work. <laughs>